That's good. Okay, um, so, so this morning my plan is to complete my discussion in Japan. Okay, uh, we'll continue with governance and policy making where we had left off. So, um, and then I'll start off with representation and participation and complete my discussion with, uh, with current challenges. Any questions so far about the final exam, about the logistics, about anything before we close? Okay, let me, let me continue with the material then. Okay, uh, organization of the state. Now, I think we were here, the military. Um, remember, rich nation, withdrawn military. Okay. And this has been changed to rich nation. Okay, so part of it was that after World War II, the Allied powers said um, the occupation, you know, after World War, right immediately after World War II, um, Japan is forbidden to rearm given the peace clause. Japan is a Pacific nation, okay? So given the peace clause, uh, Japan cannot rearm. Um, but, so, so, so the military was entirely dismantled, okay? But with the Korean War, 1950, just a few years after the end of World War II, um, with the Korean War starting, with U.S. backing, uh, Japan started to rearm, okay? Um, but, but this was, again, um, if not the support, um, but, but promotion by, um, by the U.S. government. And by the end of the decade, the Supreme Court stated, made a, made a landmark decision and said, hey, um, Japan can defend itself. Yes, we do have the peace clause, but Japan should be able to defend itself as an independent nation. Okay? So Japan started to uh, rearm um, with the, you know, taking into account the, the you know, Japan should be a, or is a Pacific nation clause in, into account. Um, it relies, I mean, the, the country will, has been relying over the course of um, post-World War II period uh, Japan had been relying on U.S. support um, for keeping security. So it was under the umbrella, under Cold War conditions. Uh, it was under the U.S.'s umbrella, security umbrella. Okay, um, and it had been spending very little on on military expenditures. When U.S., Russia, Turkey, Greece. U, um, UK, France, even Germany were, ex were, were <laughs> spending around 45% of their GDPs on military expenditures, on military items. Japan had been, had been spending less than, always less than 2%, if I remember correctly, but around 1%. So imagine the wedge between the 4.5% and the 1%. So 3.5 3 percentage points goes to where? Where do you think the Japanese invested all those, um, all that, all those resources? Huh? Industrial development, technology, uh, skilled workforce, education, R&D, okay? Hmm? Uh, it does have a, a welfare state, but it's not a comprehensive welfare state as we have in, um, in France, for example, or in Germany, okay? But it does have a na nationwide system. Um, so so uh, according to um, CIPRI data, um, does anybody know what CIPRI stands for? It's an institute in Stockholm, Stockholm Institute for Peace Research, or Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, uh, which traces, follows, monitors, 
and, um, and publishes uh, data on military spending. And according to uh, their latest data, that is for 2015, I have the figures here, US spends by about 3.3%. So, so, so GDP, once again, was the value of all goods and services produced in a given economy in a given year, right? So the state is spending about 3.3% of all those, the value of all those goods and services on military equipment, military spending, okay? Um, Russia is still above 5%, 5.4. France has gone down to 2.1. So has um, the UK, Britain, about the same, um, 2%. Two, 2 Germany is about 2.1%. Turkey has come down to 2.1%. It had been, you know, over the course of 1990s even, about 10, 15 years ago, it had been, um, 15 to 20 years ago, it had been hovering around 4%. Um, uh, like Greece, for example, our neighbor, but but has gone come down to um, 2.1 percent. But that's 2015. The numbers for 2015. Um, so so imagine what kind of goodies you can, what kind of wonders you can create with this extra three percent, and imagine that. Imagine enjoying that over the course of 60 years. Uh, the wedge, the comparative advantage that you get from lower military spending as opposed to your, your neighbors and friends and foes. Um, and you're, you're enjoying security. You're not worrying about security stuff. Um, and you're protected um, by, by the US. Uh, when we look at the judiciary, we have a Supreme Court, which is traditionally reluctant to pass judgment, uh, to declare laws unconstitutional. So it is the Diet, which is in this respect, in this framework, um, which is kind of the sole authority um, to pass legislation, certainly de jure, but also de facto, because um, especially under a predominant party regime, which we've talked about, uh, the party passes legislation, and the Constitutional Court, the Supreme Court, which reviews the constitutionality of laws, the legislations, um, is quite reluctant to, to declare any piece of legislation unconstitutional. Okay, so, so imagine the power that the predominant party LDP has, which we shall be talking about uh, in a moment. Um, and um, we, there has been a recent change in the system. Um, they have adopted a jury system like the way uh, the Americans had been operating. Um, so so um, constitutionality review, constitutional review, um, yes, it's there, de jure, but de, but de facto, um, it's, much, it's, it's, le it's used much less, um, or, or to, a, to a lesser extent than elsewhere. Um, Subnational government, we have a unitary state. And subnational government does have limited authority. We know that. Um, so subnational government has much less administrative and much less financial control um, over resources, over personnel, over the tasks that are assigned to uh, this level or these levels of government. So we have uh, the central state, the central administration, having a firm grip on subnational government. Um, so so the subnational government or subnational levels of government have much less um, authority in terms of decision making and policy making. Okay? So so this is quite unique when you compare um, the Japanese case with those um, in other advanced industrialized societies we've seen, right? In the US, subnational government is very strong. UK, decentralization, devolution, uh, subnational governments are, are getting stronger, although it is a unitary state. Germany is a federal state, federal political system anyway, so I'm not even going into, into that. Uh, France 
had, had been one of the epitom epitomies of um, you know, archetypical examples of centralized government, but that's also been changing, as we've seen. Japan is still, Japanese central state is still holding um, power, central state, central government, is still holding uh, massive authority over uh, subnational governance. Okay, um, so, so, so Japan had been, or has been quite unique in that respect. Um, and, and when you look at central government, it still collects more than actually um, two thirds of all um, taxes. So, so once again, it's a highly centralized system, highly centralized government with the central government um, enjoying a huge authority over uh, decision making and policy making. When we look at policy making, um, we have the predominant party. It's installed the predominant party regime. We have opposition, but we have one party coming to power one election after another, right? Um, and and so so party becomes more like state, and state becomes more like party in the sense that it may become blur, blurry um, in terms of state party lines. You know, where do you, so when do you talk about the party, you also refer to the state structure in that respect too, because it's the same party uh, dominating state structures uh, over the course of many, many, many decades. So 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, some losing of grip, um, 2000s, end of 2000s, losing some of its grip, uh, 2009, but then back to square one again. So LDP is still powerful as we speak. Um, so what kind of policy making uh, has this predominant party regime, or can this predominant party regime be characterized by? Um, we have... Um, you will remember that we talked about iron triangles. For which case do we rem Germany, probably not. US. Recently, remember, um, we, I, we talked about the environmental agency, um, environmental protection agency, Congress, members of Congress, and interest groups or tobacco industry, congressional subcommittees, agricultural subcommittees, um, and tobacco industry, okay, right? So, so Congress, um, so um, legislature, uh, bureaucracy, part of the executive, implementing agency, and um, at the top would be, um, you know, on the vortex, uh, vertex of the, not the vortex, the vertex uh, of the, uh, of the triangle, the third vertex would be represented by um, pressure groups, interest groups. So we have a similar structure here. Uh, we have similar institutionalization, regime-like institution here. Uh, we have Zoku. Um, these are clientelistic tribes within the LDP. So, um, so these, are, um, these are groups within the um, predominant party. Um, these are experienced members of the Diet. These are experienced um, members of the party, LDP, and they are also um, enjoying high levels of expertise. So they're also experts in their field. Um, what are these fields? Agriculture, transport, construction. So especially those sectors in which the state spends a lot of spending going on. So, um, so, so these members of the Diet with personal connections to interest groups, to pressure groups, um, who actively lobby them. And um, it becomes a game of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours too. Okay? So, so, um, so what we refer to in the US as pork barrel 
politics. You know, this term was originally developed for, for, uh, for representing US um, policymaking structure. Um, you know, legislation benefiting particular groups. Um, so you pass a piece of legislation which, which is addressing a particular group in a given constituency, in a given district, and there is a politician, a representative in that district. So, so um, you channel resources to that district in order to gain some votes or in order to gain support for a policy decision. So, so there is, in the end, preferential allocation of resources um, to a given region in return for support, in return for votes, basically, you know, to, to enjoy political advantage or electoral advantage to a, a certain politician or a political party. So, um, so iron triangles abound. Um, I'm sorry about this. So um, there are iron triangles, entrenched, vested interests, um, which are composed of, just like in the case of the US, uh, we have, you know, um, uh, committees in the Diet, so in, in both houses. Uh, we have um, um, ministries, bureauc bureaucracies, bureaucrats, that is to say civil service, and we have interest group leaders, uh, you know, whose interests converge and who make policy altogether. Uh, one um, specific term that the Japanese have for this is zoku. So, 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 so you, can, you can compare, you can see the, the, the comparison to the US case. You know, in, in both cases, we have pork barrel politics. In both cases, we have clientelistic ties, Gesundheit. In both cases, um, we have iron triangles, so vested interests. And in, in both cases, we have um, reform which is difficult in, na in, in terms of the processes through which reform takes place. But um, Japan is a centralized state. US is a federal state, federal government. Um, separation of powers is much stronger in the US compared to or in contrast to to the Japanese case. Um, and also on top of, you know, those, those um, vested interests, we also have a predominant party coming to power one, out, one election after another. So, so, so reform becomes quite difficult to carry out, to design, but also implement. Um, so, so these entrenched interests um, to students of um, Japanese politics um, have been hindering all kinds of these reforms, um, the, especially the structural reforms that, that were taking up to the agenda back in the early 19, late 1980s, early 1990s, but also throughout the, 20, uh, the early 21st century too. Um, so then comes... Um, Representation and participation. So we've been um, we've been talking about organization of the state, governance and policy making, um, but we've also been talking about you know societal aspects, interest intermediation, interest representation. When we were talking about iron triangles, zoku, uh, pork barrel politics, and, and all that. So we have a bicameral system or bicameral legislature, the national diet. Um, the House of Representatives, 480 members, they're elected for um, four years. Um, and we have the House of Councillors, which is the upper house. The House of Representatives is the lower house, um, in which there can be called a vote of confidence in the lower house. So it is the lower house in the sense that um, it is exposed to public opinion. Um, if public opinion changes against its members, then with a vote of no confidence, the government may lose power. 
Okay. So, um, so, so, um, House of Councillors, um, Upper House, House of Representatives, Lower House. House of Councillors have 240 something members, 242 members. They're elected for six year terms and it's a splintered system. So, um, so half of the house, the upper house is elected for six years. After three years, the other half will be elected for another six years. After three years, the other half will be elected for six years. So we call this a splintered system. Okay, so it is in a way similar to um, the Senate in the U.S. case. Okay, um, so so uh, for six years, um, when you look at terms of uh, the legislature, le legislative terms, um, four-year term is almost always three years. So there's always early elections or snap elections. Um, because there is there's some kind of a crisis, some kind of a turmoil, um, and then um, the system. Um, well, uh, there 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 is the government calls another um, election. Bills are introduced in the House of Representatives, the Cabinet, or the Committee, or by a member. Um, it goes to a committee. But in these committees, given LDP's grip on the legislature, these committees work like LDP committees, or LDP-led committees anyway, okay? because it's a predominant party system. It's a, it's a predominant party. And they're passed by the um, House of Representatives, which in turn are passed by, is passed by the House of Commons, or it could be vice versa. It could go through the House of Commons first. It could then be passed by House of Representatives. So, so the order does not matter in the case of Japan. Okay, um, and once a bill is passed in both of these houses, the upper house and the lower house, the emperor promulgates in the official gazette. It's a pro forma, uh, it's a pro forma um, um, formality. Okay, so, so the, the emperor promulgates except for the budget. The emperor has no rights um, in, in spending decisions, spending and taxing decisions, um, but especially spending decisions. So, so, um, so, so as you can see, um, budget laws have a special standing in the legislative process. So the chief executive will have much less say, or the upper houses will have much less say in, um, in decisions regarding budgets, regarding spending. Because this has been the, um, the archetypical uh, right of the representatives um, in, in a given democratic system. Um, and it has been under the monopoly of um, those representatives. Anyway, um, there is voting along party lines, which means that we have strong party discipline in the case of Japan. Um, and membership of these houses are in a way hereditary, not de jure, of course. So we, have, we don't have anything like that we have in the case of Britain. But de facto, um, it is members, it, it, is, it is, you know, families um, like dynasties uh, or families um, whose members are, um, are politicians. Okay, so, so we have political families um, w which have strong ties with the political class, and um, so so it is. It passes from father to son um, membership in the diet. So so in, in that respect, it is de facto hereditary uh, membership in the um, national diet. Um, most business is is conducted in committees. So it is the committees 
which are dominated, which are led by the LDP in the House, um, in the Houses, like it's uh, in the Diet. Um, so most decisions are taken by, by LDP-led committees. And it is, you know, Zoku, um, Iron Triangles, lobbying will all be um, will all be carried out towards those committees. So that's where um, most daily work takes place. That's where the meat of legislation um, in the bill um, is drafted. That's where politics give politics of uh, give and take, politics of you know quote quid pro quo politics takes place. Um, tit for tat, or you know, like there's there's uh, higgling and haggling, uh, there's negotiation, not much deliberation, but negotiation um, taking place in those in those committees, um, which are exposed to interest group politics. Um, let me talk about political parties. Um, we have. The, well, we have, of course, the LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, which was founded uh, about 10 years after World War II, and um, it had been enjoying, um, you know, a huge power, huge authority in the system since then. Oh, so it's been, it's been more than, um, 60 years the LDP had been founded. Um, those are the figures on the right, lower house election, upper house election, house of councillors, house of um, uh, representatives. Those, those figures belong to an earlier day, earlier date. Uh, I'll give you the figures shortly. But let me talk to you briefly about the parties here. Um, what kind of a party system are we talking about? predominant party, although we have multiple parties, right? We have many parties competing against one another, or we have, in, in effect, all these parties competing against the LDP. So it has been enjoying a firm grip on power, a firm grip on authority, um, Policy making, decision making over the course of almost 60 years, with some intermissions, uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, and late 2000s, um, 2009, 2010, and, and till about 2012. Um, so the Liberal Democratic Party, as you can see, it's, it's a right wing, center right, but, but mostly right wing party. We have Democratic Party of Japan which had been founded in 1998, which had merged only this year, I believe it was in March, with Japan Innovation Party, and they have declared themselves as Democratic Party. Um, clean Government Party. Um, so so, so these, these parties would be representing more or less the center, uh, which have been contending for power, and Social Democratic Party and Japanese Communist Party are other parties, um, which have been again, you know, older parties in the in the party system, um, but but which have not been able to um, to gain ascendance to power, um, given LDP's firm grip on party politics. Um, Liberal Democratic Party represents stability. Sure. What was the name of the party which led World War II? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> it's a shame, but um, was it the Liberal Party? Um, let's look it up. Sure. Um, but what happened was, you know, in about 10 years after World War II, uh, there were different parties, Liberal Party, Democratic Party and others, they say, okay, we, we, we need national unity, we need to consolidate, we need to defragment 
we need to get unified. Um, so so um, they merged and formed the Liberal Democratic Party, which, um, I mean, there are rival factions within the LDP. They've always remained rival factions within the LDP because of these ongoing mergers. Um, some of these factions have, have defected in time um, throughout the post-World War II period. And uh, the Democratic Party of Japan grew part in part from those factions. Um, but, but, but before that, uh, rival factions abound. Rival factions uh, are also bound by clientelistic ties. Um, so clientelistic ties are informal aspects of policy making in which or whereby we, we have a, a powerful patron, in this case, dominant party, offering goodies, offering privileges, offering resources such as subsidies, such as employment, jobs, um, such as contracts, um, such as land distributed to the clients in return for support, in return for political advantage, in return for electoral support, electoral pledges. Um, so, so there is in effect, preferential treatment of these clients. And there is, um, you know, variations of all forms of corruption involved. And Japanese politics have, um, have always been sensitive to corruption. Um, it's, 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 I think it's waning, uh, that, that particular character. Um, but um, but corruption scandals have 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 always been very Im Im important in rocking LDP, uh, not the party itself, but rival factions within the LDP. So every two three years in the post World War II period, 1970s 1980s, um, it was in the news that there was another corruption scandal, and there was a new prime minister. Um, after that particular scandal. Uh, so politicians do not remain in office in when there is a scandal um, um, you know, bursting. Um, so, so rival factions within the party, uh, they're all, they're, as, as I've said, they're bound by clientelistic ties. Um, and that, that explains, to a certain extent, this patron client relationships, Zoku, um, entrenchment of entrenched interests. Um, so, all of these explain to a certain extent uh, how LDP had remained in power for all those decades. Um, it has been remaining dominant in the especially House of Representatives, uh, but suffering losses since the late 1980s, briefly. Um, and then, you know, um, and then 2009, um, but, it, but has been gaining power since then. Um, so among the centrist parties was Democratic Party of Japan, which merged with the um, Japan Innovation Party. Um, there were smaller parties which made up the J, um, the DPJ, I'm sorry. Um, Democratic Party of Japan, which also relied on a faction that came out of the LDP. Um, so, so, so they are, or they have been contending for power in the Diet um, against, against um, LDP's firm grip and power. Um, Social Democratic Party formed in 1955. Communist Party was formed in 1945, and there are other parties. Um, let me show you um, how the, the predominant party had been faring since the 1990s, and um, Democratic Party of Japan, what used to be Democratic Party of Japan, now uh, Democratic Party uh, had been doing um, in terms of diet seats. So, so, um, so, so this is the combined seats in the Diet. 
Okay, so both House of Councillors and House of Representatives, um, as you can see, um, has been going up till 2004, 2005, declining 2009, and in which period we have 64, two thirds of the entire House is dominated by the contending party. Um, then sharply declining 2012, then sharply uh, increasing. So, so as you can see here, last 10 years or so um, had been quite unstable in terms of um, the composition of seats in the parliament, um, in terms of you know, who has power in the parliament. Um, it seems that you know um, observers have been have been arguing or have been speculating that the LDP uh, under Shinzo Abe um, has or, or will be will will see another you know pattern of stability um, from from today onwards. Um, the latest election produced. Um, let me talk about the latest election, uh, elections. Um, December 2014, that's about two years ago. July 2013 for House of Councillors and House of Representatives. Um, within the 475 seat parliament, LDP had gained about you know, um, basically 300 seats, 294 seats. That's, that's almost um, two thirds of the entire seats in the, in the, uh, in the lower house. Uh, and uh, DP now, DP, uh, what used to be um, Democratic Party of Japan, is, um, is holding about 100 seats, or less than 100 seats. Um, house of Councillors, among the 242 seats, we have li um, Liberal Democratic, party enjoying 150, 15 seats, and the DPJ, now DP, I'm sorry, there's a typo there, enjoying about 60 seats, 59 seats. So, so these are the results for the, um, for, for the most recent elections. Um, I have about another half hour, half an hour of material to complete my discussion, but, but before then, we need to do course evaluations. So I'll step outside for about 20 minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll distribute those to you. I'll hand in those to you and then um, I'll see you in about 20 minutes. That is to say 40, let's say 50, 1150. Okay, so in about 20 minutes. Any questions, by the way? No questions. Hello? In the, in the figure, yes. Twenty of twenty o five, twenty o six. Yes, twenty here about here about. What happened, huh? What, what explains that? Uh, well, um, there have been some scandals going on, and. It was en route to um, late 1990s. Japan is shaken by the Asian financial crisis. Okay, um, early 2000s, as you can see, um, there there is there is a closer um, wedge between um, between these two parties. Then the wedge increases. Then rock bottom. Um, I don't remember what exactly caused this. Um, I don't recall much writing on this either. Um, but but it, I mean, much of the literature talks about this as an economic phenomenon. Uh, the aftershocks of the financial crisis. 1990s were turbulent years. So was 2000s. And um, financial crisis worldwide, Great Recession. Um, and with the financial crisis, um, Japan had, had also been shaken. So, so um, I don't recall anything in particular except for the global 
um, great recession that, that we've, been, we've been experiencing since um, 2007, 2008. So it is, to a certain extent, the, this alternation in this respect uh, may have been, may have something to do with, well, a lot of to do with the Great Recession. So I would presume that would be the answer. Um, okay, break. <laughs>